HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. And by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. Hello and welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, 10 female teenagers completed a week of emergency services and firefighting training at Camp Bailout hosted by the Ashland Fire Department. Ashland Post 77 Legion Baseball completed their season. We caught up with third baseman and 2015 Hopkinton High School graduate Mike Messia and Courtney will get you up to date with the latest programming coming up on our HCAM channels with the HCAM Insider. But first, here are some happenings in Hopkinton you should know about. Hopkinton Police Chief Edward Lee told some stories at the Selectman meeting about Officer Thomas Griffin but the, the, he's one of a kind. When I first got on, he, uh, he was you know, a great help to me. He was like my FTO when I came to town, which he is an FTO field training officer. And he drove me around town. He told me the history of the whole town, and he knew it all. I mean, he's seen it all in police work. He's seen over the decades the changing, the several different programs, how law enforcement has re reacted to different things. So I'm sure there's not a story, and he has a lot of stories, the good ones too. <laughs> That he could expand upon. The chief stated Officer Griffin is retiring, not because he wants to, but because of his age, it is state law. So Tom has worked several decades, and he is the one of the most dedicated police officers I ever met. As a matter of fact, he doesn't want to leave, he has to leave because of his age. I don't <laughs> Selectman did approve the Hopkinton police request to keep Officer Griffin on as a special officer to advise and perform other select duties. In this picture, Town Manager Norman Kumalu spoke about Officer Griffin during a special luncheon held in his honor. This picture shared by Hopkinton police shows a gas main that was struck at Spicebush Court at Legacy Farms Eversource Gas, Police and Fire were quick to fix the problem. In this picture, the 12th Annual Hopkinton Community Summer Band prepares to play as part of the Concerts on the Common series. In this picture, you can see clerks throughout New England, and pretty much right in the middle, in the top row, it's Hopkinton Town Clerk Connor Deegan. Connor recently attended the New England Municipal Clerks Institute and Academy for a week-long training session. Hopkinton selectmen voted unanimously for town manager Norman Kumalu to continue negotiations with E.L. Harvey and Sons for a five-year deal. The deal will switch the town to automated trash and recycling pickup. Residents will receive a 96-gallon wheeled cart for recycling and a 64-gallon cart for trash at no charge, as seen here in video from the live forum that was hosted at the HCAM studios in late May. Residents can also request smaller barrels or choose to opt out of the program to continue putting out trash and recycling with no changes. One is that folks would receive one of these for trash and one of these for recyclables at no cost to either the town or residents. For more of the latest happenings in Hopkinton, check out our website, hcam.tv. The Ashland Fire Department hosted Camp Bailout. The camp educates female teenagers throughout the area on fire and emergency medical services. This year, the 10 participants had the opportunity to use equipment, talk to many various EMS and fire professionals, and much more. Get you up front, Ten students graduated from this year's camp bailout. The camp is hosted by the Ashland Fire Department. Thanks for uh, volunteering your daughters that do this week of camp. That was great. 
But I just want to recognize the instructors. Lynn did. But on my behalf, thank you very much. And I'd like to recognize Lieutenant Morihan. There's a lot of work that was put into this. Uh, she starts months ago to, uh, to get this all prepared and stuff. So thank you, Lieutenant. I appreciate it. I liked going to UMass. I liked rappelling and I liked boating. I liked the rappelling a lot because we got to go up from the top of the building. The camp allows teenage girls between 12 and 19 to explore what it's like to work in the fire and emergency medical service professions. At UMass, we learned about Life Flight and what the nurses, doctors, and paramedics do there. Yeah, we also at Life Flight got to see the helicopter land, and so that was cool. And we got to learn about what happened with, like, how long it takes them to get victims sometimes, because it took them two hours when they thought it'd only take 20 minutes. <laughs> Participants in the camp had the opportunity to learn and use equipment as well as talk to industry professionals. Uh, the students were great. Um, they all worked very well together. They worked with us. They were very receptive, asked lots of questions, and uh, I think they learned a lot. 2016 Camp Bailout program was probably one of the most successful so far. We had uh, 10 students, and they were a little bit older this year, which what I was gearing it towards. Uh, and it really worked out great. Uh, they, they bonded very quickly, which was a huge advantage. It made things a whole lot easier for both them and for us. Uh, but we started right out of the gate. Monday, we did uh, some fire extinguisher training. We did some engine operation hose handling and then ladder operations too. Uh, Tuesday, we went right into auto extrication, jaws of life training. Uh, then we did some boat operations in the afternoon, which was great because it was so hot. The girls got an opportunity to cool down in the reservoir. Wednesday, we, we did a little bit of a road trip, went out to UMass Memorial in Worcester, and they got a tour of the trauma facility. Uh, Life flight came in. They got a, a tour of the helicopter, uh, the ground ambulance, and the comms area where the 911 and all the calls come in. So that took us all morning. We didn't get back here till about 2 o'clock. Uh, and then we made up that time with a little bit of team building exercises. Uh, Thursday was all day rappelling. We, we, we did, uh, the, the girls did rappelling out of the second and third story. Uh, windows and then they actually learned how to actually climb up and work together as a team hauling so that whole day was spent uh, repelling which is always one of the highlights of the week and then Friday we we kind of did a little bit of everything we went back with EMS uh, talked to the girls about different kind of medical emergencies that they may come across how to handle it and, and also uh, we had a friend of mine who has a service canine. He came and he did some demos with his search and rescue canine, uh, which is, is obviously very close to my heart because I retired my own search and rescue canine two years ago. And this gentleman and myself are on the same team. So he was nice enough to come and with his new dog and give a demo. And we had some of the girls hide and his dog find them. So that was a lot of fun uh, for the last day. And then we ended uh, today with uh, a challenge course. We put everything that the girls learned over the week, we put it together, and then we challenged them and timed them. So uh, it was a nice competitive way to end the, the week, and, and they were up for the challenge. This particular group, they didn't bat down, uh, back down from anything. Everything that we threw at them, they, they were up for it, and they gave us 110%. So. Uh, I have to say it was a very successful week uh, and the girls made it very easy for us to teach and they were very adaptable and they were very, uh, I guess you could say sponges at this point. They, they really absorbed a lot of the information that we, we gave them, we threw a lot at them and they loved it. So um, I would have to say for me this is definitely one of the, the favorite years and groups that I've had to teach so far. And I, I think that I'm going to speak for my staff too with that. Uh, yeah, the experience was great as, uh, as always. The campers this year, the programmers this year were great. Um, it was very successful, very fun, hot, but it was, and, it was um, good. Minus the IT guy, how'd you like working with the uh, other instructors? Uh, the other instructors are great. I work with uh, Heather and Lynn doing mutual aid calls. Um, so it's really nice to get to work with Laurie and uh, Meg, who we don't see uh, except for during the week. One student from Hopkinton stated she is highly considering a career in emergency medical services. I want to be a paramedic when I'm older, or a nurse. 
Uh, so the program's uh, becoming nationwide. Uh, hopefully it'll draw more, more girls in so we can get them into the uh, emergency service. For more about Camp Bailout, you can check out their website at campbailout.org. Coming up on HCAM News, Courtney will get you up to date with everything coming up on the HCAM channels with our HCAM Insider. We'll get you caught up with what happened during the final week of Ashland Legion Baseball, including interviews with Mike Messia and head coach Derek Johnson. And we'll take you back in time with some happenings you may have missed. A lot more on HCAM News ahead. Stay tuned. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Do you have what it takes? make a difference? Always an adventure. Police and fire working together. Utilizing the latest technology. Do you have what it takes? Welcome back to HCAM News. Ashland Legion Baseball featured a young team this year that has gained a lot of experience throughout the season. The post-77 squad entered their final game of the season against Sudbury without a playoff chance, but had an opportunity to play spoiler for Sudbury. On Wednesday, July 13th, it was the last game of the regular season for Ashland Legion Baseball. 4-10 and 1 post-77 took on Sudbury. Sudbury led 6-0 into the top of the 7th and ended up adding five more runs in the inning and took the game 11 to nothing. Ashland wrapped up the season with a record of 4-11 and 1. Sudbury later lost to Newton in the Zone 5 playoffs and wrapped up the season 13 and 6 overall. Despite a tough year record-wise, 2015 Hopkinton graduate Mike Messia enjoyed playing for Ashland post-77 this season. Mike, well, uh, a tough season over record-wise, but it looked like you guys had a lot of fun out there, a lot of young players that really seemed to develop this year. How do you think the year went? Um, you know, it was obviously frustrating year uh, record-wise, but, um, but, you know, it's a great group of guys. Um, we had a lot of fun with it, and uh, that's all you can ask for, so. And I noticed uh, a lot of the players moved around the diamond a little bit, got to play some different positions. Uh, I think I saw you at shortstop a couple times. You moved over to third base. Uh, how, how did, what did you think about the versatility of this team? It seemed like there was a lot of good uh, versatility here. Yeah, there's, um, there's a lot of young players that can, that can play a lot of positions, um, and that's always helpful on a team. Um, and for those individual players moving forward. All right, well, you're playing over at uh, Clarkson. How's that going for you? Very good, very good. I love it there. Excellent. So what's next on the agenda for you this summer? Uh, just, just a lot of training uh, and then heading back to school in August. So. All right. Well, congratulations on a great season and congratulations on a great Legion career. Thank you very much. All right. Here with head coach Derek Johnson. Coach, well, a tough season record-wise, but a young team this year. And it seems like everyone got some really good experience this year. Uh, could you just talk about how the year went overall? Yeah. You know, we kind of similar to last year, started off rough. And then towards the end there, we put together a couple good wins, like last night at Natick, coming back, getting that win was big. Um, you know, it started off with the fourth, Bill Rick having a forfeit here on Sunday, came back, we were Natick. So, you know, could have had this game. Miles pitched great. You know, I think if you look at his stats, he, yeah, it was a, what, 12 nothing game. 
but only two were uh, two runs of those were earned. Right. You know, there's a lot of errors, but you know that's what it is. A young team towards the end of the year, you give kids a chance to play. You know, you hope that they come in and take, you know, the advantage of it, make the plays. A couple of them were tough, so it is. You know, it is what it is. You know, that's the team we have. The kids battled all year. Had, and I'm pretty sure a lot of them will say they had a good time. They had a lot of fun doing it too. So, well, it certainly looked like you guys had a uh, fun out there and a lot of versatility on this team. I noticed guys moving around to different positions a lot. Uh, how do you think uh, the players playing different positions and getting good uh, playing time in competitive Legion situations for these young guys uh, will affect the team going forward? Uh, it's good. You know, a lot of the kids that you know are playing in different positions are that's you know where they normally play they may have been playing out of position you know early on and it is more so to you know help out the team you know we only have 18 kids and then when you lose a couple and you show up with nine you know it kind of forces my hand so I gotta put kids where I can do I necessarily want to play them at short or second or third or wherever no but if I got someone that you know depending on who we're playing you know you base it off of that you know, Mess stepping up. He started us, started off at shortstop, you know, the first half of the year. And then he's playing third in college. We want to give him some reps over there. So it opens up an opportunity for one of the younger kids. Or like a Mike Krupe, who's normally a second baseman, to get in over there and get some ground balls at short. So, you know, these kids have high school seasons too. You don't want to, like, throw them too much out of position. But and it all comes down to the pitching thing, like we talked about earlier, you know, without – we don't have a staff. I think we got two kids, three kids that pitch. And losing Obit to an injury early on, you know, I think he's only thrown two games at hurt. So, you know, a lot of kids have been pitching this year. So it opens up spots for other kids. Right. I don't think you can argue with the valuable experience that a lot of these younger players uh, got this season as well. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So, Coach, what's on the uh, slate for you the rest of the summer? Uh, I don't know. A lot of work. Uh, it's been going for, I coached the Devils 13U team in town, so that's over. This is over. And then I got a month off, and then AU picks up again. But we got the Chairman's Cup next week, you know, on Tuesday. So this is the focus right now. And put, to, put together some wins, hopefully, through that, make a run, and then end the year on a good note. And we'll go from there. All right, well, best of luck in the Chairman's Cup, and thanks for another uh, fun season of Ashland Legion Baseball, and we look forward to next year. Thank you. All right, thanks a lot. For more about Ashland Legion Baseball, be sure to check out our website, hcam.tv. You can also watch full Ashland Legion games on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash hcamtv. This past May, the Hopkinton Police Association hosted their annual fishing derby. It was a great day for the family, as on the sunny Saturday, many participated and a good time was had by all. In case you missed it, here is a look at the Hopkinton Police Association Fishing Derby. It's a great event that we have for the kids. Um, We've been having it for several years. Matter of fact, we have Cabela's that came today to uh, bring some gifts and some fishing poles and worms, which was awesome. And the gentleman that came, actually in 1983 when we had the fishing derby, he won the biggest fish, and he actually brought his trophy with him today. So that was pretty exciting. I wasn't here in 1983, but uh, it was pretty exciting to hear that this uh, derby's been going on since then. It's taken a couple years off here and there, but as you can see, it's a great event for uh, the kids. Is there a lot of fish being caught today? Have you seen any? Yeah, lots of fish on the on the uh, board over there. You'll see uh, how many fish have been caught today. We uh, buy. We paid a thousand dollars for uh, and had the, the pond stocked with the, with the trout. There's also two golden trout in there somewhere where nobody nobody caught them today. But, uh, so they get a special prize if they catch those. Yeah, well, we have fishing poles for them. Uh, they don't get a trophy, but we have lots of trophies. We have three trophies for first place, first, second, and third place. We have a trophy for the smallest. Uh, we have the uh, a trophy for the first fish caught and the most fish caught. All right, and how do you like this weather for a day? Oh, we had it perfect because last week it was supposed to rain today, and so I was a little nervous. But, you know, we have this rain or shine. And then, as you see, we uh, do hot dogs and hamburgers. Dunkin' Donuts donated all kinds of uh, donuts. 
Um, and uh, bagels, hot chocolate, and coffee. It's a great, you know, the, the, uh, a lot of the businesses in town donated to have this event happen today, which is great. And I thank them so much for allowing this to happen. All right, and I gotta say, uh, congratulations on your uh, recent award from the uh, Juvenile Police Association. Oh, thanks. Uh, it was an honor, so thank you so much. See you, Timmy. Enjoy your day. All right, beautiful uh, day for the uh, fishing derby event today. Uh, how's your day going out there? Uh, not too good. I didn't catch any fish. <laughs> I better catch a bad guys than fish. <laughs> but it's a, a beautiful day. Obviously, from the board, several people have been lucky, but not me. <laughs> All right, can you talk about this event and uh, uh, what it's for? Yeah, it's a, it's one of the things, the many things that uh, officers do to, to get involved in the community, help out, and uh, just let the you know let them know that our officers you know are friendly and uh, want to be part of this community. Uh, Phil Powers does an outstanding job. He, he uh, spearheaded the whole event. He's been doing it for years. And he puts a lot of uh, time and effort into it. And it's just a way of uh, giving back to the community. How many you having fun out there? Yeah. Did you catch anything? Um, two fish or three. Wow. You're doing good. Are they big fish? Um, no, not yet. <laughs> Where do you usually fish? Um, we fish across the street at my at the lake. We have across our street lake hall. White, White hall. Oh, you go fishing a lot? Yeah. Oh, okay, so you're experienced. Yeah. You got the advantage here today. <laughs> That's why I have the hat. Here. Here. All right. Last fish caught. Evan, who's Evan? Yeah. All right, Evan. Right here. All right, Evan. And the trophy, last fish caught. Great job, all right? I need a $25 gift card to Cabela's. All right. All right. First fish. Where's Julia? There you go. First fish. Oops. That's all right. We were using your trophy to hold up the sign. Sorry, you don't get it. Jazz kid. There you go. The hat from Cabela's. All right. Most fish. Cassie, where are you, Cassie? You must have got your exercise going back and forth today. Cassie had 16 fish. Good job. Any of most fish? Most fish. There you go. There's a fishing bag from Cabela's. Cassie's a cheerleader. HHS. All right. So third place for the biggest fish is Madison. Madison Hadley. She here? Wait. Hey! There you go. Great job. And there's a 25 dollars gift card to Cabela's. Oh, great job. Hold on, let me grab a picture. Thank you. Good job. Liam Stewart for the second biggest fish. He's not here yet, but uh, I'll get it to him. Okay. All right. And then the first, where's Nina? Nina caught Yay! the biggest fish. Woo! That is so awesome. She was also tied for the first fish caught, too. Good job. And you get that big tackle box. And there you go. You got a big tackle box. Or you could use it for a lunch box. You could bring me lunch at the school. Hey, hold on. Can I get a picture? Thank you so much. Congratulations. Another annual event hosted by the Hopkinton Police Department is coming up. National Night Out will take place at the middle school and high school fields on Tuesday, August 2nd. National Night Out allows community members of all ages to talk to police about crime prevention, learn about equipment, and much more. There will also be food, live music, exhibits, and a canine demonstration. See more details, as well as video and photos from prior years of National Night Out on our website, hcam.tv. Despite summer being in full swing, there are still many programs coming up on HCAM to get you up to date with our upcoming summer programming. Here is Courtney Taylor with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Saturday, July 23rd at 1.30 p.m., it's Ashland Legion Baseball versus Natick. And at 3.30 p.m., it's Ashland Legion Baseball versus Sudbury. 
On Monday, July 25th at 7 p.m., audience members get a chance to shine as they perform original poetry, stories, and songs on a new Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. Cidery air up to blossoms, cerulean. Grandfather's blessings begun. On Tuesday, July 26th at 7 p.m., Heim Pickles' students perform in this third piano recital. At 8 p.m., the Hopkinton Community Summer Band is back at Concerts on the Common to entertain the crowd with well-known and classic tunes. On Sunday, July 31st at 10 a.m., the planning board meeting from July 25th will air. If you want to know what's happening here at HCAM, head on over to hcam.tv connect to sign up for our HCAM Insider Newsletter. Or if you want to know about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can subscribe to our daily news updates. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Right now on our website, you can view more from Camp Bailout, Ashland Legion Baseball, and more of the latest happenings in town. If there is a photo, video, or story idea you would like to share with us, feel free to email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care, and thank you for watching HCAM. See you.